Hello! Welcome, my name is Anne if you're new here. I am a final year PhD student studying nanomedicine and drug delivery at the University of British Columbia. I have sent off my thesis for revision by my committee members two weeks ago. I don't know if you can sense a different kind of vibe because I'm like thesis free and I just feel a lot lighter and a lot more chill. And now I'm just waiting for their feedback so that I can make the edits to my thesis and then send it off to the upper level so the graduate and postdoctoral studies so that they can send it to my examiners. So we are in a waiting phase right now and I thought that I would sit down and actually list out the things that I think would be super helpful for you when you're writing your thesis because these are things that I did along the way or I did not do along the way that I think can really help you when you are actually sitting down after doing all of your experiments, after doing all of your research to write that big freaking thesis. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I didn't even know this, but you should figure out what kind of thesis your thesis will be. And it varies for different locations and different schools and stuff, but it could be a manuscript based thesis where you just take your like published papers and just combine all of it together and that's your thesis or a non manuscript based. So that's where you actually don't publish anything and you just write your thesis from start to finish. So I didn't know that, but for our lab and for our faculty, the students in Dr. Lee's lab actually are all on the paper-based thesis. So that's really helpful for when you're actually writing your thesis because after you publish the papers or even draft up papers that you will be publishing, you just copy and paste it all onto your thesis and like make sure that they connect. I don't think everyone does that and every lab is different. So first thing is to check and make sure which route you will be taking because if you are doing the non-paper based thesis then it's even more crucial to start writing even earlier because there's not going to be kind of like uh, deadlines and milestones that are more clear when you're comparing it to a paper based thesis because for me like for a paper based thesis like okay I know I have to publish three first author research papers so I can clearly kind of like outline like where I'm at exactly in my PhD depending on where I'm at with my publication process and then that is kind of like a progress bar for me of how far I am along in finishing my thesis but if I was doing a like non-paper based thesis I, I, I would have just left it to the very end and that would have been disastrous so first tip is to figure out what kind of thesis requirements you have and which route you're going to be taking now, the second tip is as you are writing your manuscripts and stuff even right from the get-go the very first thing that really really saved time for me was to actually find and stick to one referencing app or program. When I first started I didn't really understand this or know this but when you are reading articles online like research articles you can either read it online or you can just download the pdf and save it to a folder and so what I was doing I was downloading the pdfs and I was saving it onto folders on my computer and of course it quickly got really out of hand so I learned learned about this program on the computer called Mendeley. I don't know how to pronounce it. Some people say Mendeley, Mendeley, and it's free and it freaking is just, it's, it's just, it's just everything. I don't understand how it's free because it's so helpful. You can download your PDF or you can actually just like tell it to add to your Mendeley. So every time you go online and you see a research paper, you can actually just have like an add in to your web browser and then you can just click this button and it will add to your library and then you'll have all of your references in one place and you can organize it however you want you can put them into separate folders you can highlight it you can make notes and it's all there like that's already great but another even more awesome thing is that when you're going to write up your stuff so either that's a research paper or your thesis you can just freaking like, okay, here's an example. I wrote a sentence and I want to cite this paper. I can just freaking go to Word and after all the add-ins and stuff are figured out and like are all installed, which are pretty simple by the way to do, I can just type in what I remember of that paper, either the title, the name of the authors, the year, whatever information, and just add it and then it will just cite for me in Word. You can also generate a bibliography, which is super important, and it just goes 
Sorry, my, my, my memory card uh, ran out of space. So this is a new memory card. I don't know where I left off and it stopped recording. But I think I was raving about Mandalay. So basically, yeah, it's a lovely thing. A lovely program saved me so much. And it keeps track of all of my references, all of the documents that I want to save, can cite for me, can make a bibliography for me. I can change the styling whenever I want. It's there. I have a login information so that I can reach it from different computers. I just log in. And, it, and it's just there and the best thing about this is when you copy and paste for me right like I wrote three different research articles and then when I went and copied and pasted it to one big document that is my thesis it automatically updates all of the numbering and updates the bibliography like that was just oh my gosh I don't know how much longer Mendeley will be free but if you don't have it go get it and freaking start using it right now because it is just the best thing ever I only know of like one one other really commonly used um, reference manager, which is called OneNote. But I tried working with that and it just wasn't as simple for me. So it might be like a personal preference thing, but whatever it is, whatever kind of like referencing thing that you use, just make sure you have something like make sure you are using some kind of program that can keep all of your references in one place because by the time you finish your degree you will have so many references and if you are freaking going in and manually making your bibliography manually putting in your citations mm, that's not gonna be good that's not gonna be good at all the next tip i have is as you are going along your phd your master's program whatever you will be making figures and you will be using these figures for, for different things you can be using it for presentations such as like conference presentations conference posters course requirements where you have to present just figures in general so that you can present to your lab mates in lab meeting committee meetings and then of course manuscripts and then your thesis i feel like this is something I didn't do because I didn't think about this but if you're early enough in your program and you can still do this I think this is something you should consider but choose one kind of layouts or theme of graphs and charts and stuff and stick to that so in our lab most of us uses prism and we can you know go in and change the colors change like the font of the x-axis of the y-axis change the shape and the color of like the points on like a plot there's so many things you can change and if anyone actually goes and reads my thesis which I please beg you do not they'll see that my figures are not consistent at all and I know that like if I were to go back I would keep it consistent so I would choose one first one program either Excel or Prism I think I prefer Prism because they look more professional more custom it's easier to use than Excel and kind of set like a theme for myself and then just follow that formatting for all of my figures for every single thing that I do because very very likely the figure that I used for one conference like three years ago it's a key piece of data and it will likely end up in my my script which will likely end up in my thesis and then so if you look at my thesis I have like you know figures from my first year from my first manuscript it's just like red green blue and then you can see like as I go on and on like towards later years like it's more monochrome <laughs> so I don't know what that says about me and my journey of like being colorful at the beginning that, that anyways let's not get too philosophical but yeah so it doesn't look as clean and as professional and I know that but I just I just couldn't be bothered to go back and like change everything because oh, there's a whole thing when you're making figures and stuff and then you're putting into your thesis which I'll get to later but if you're early on Try to do this and think about this. That's something to keep in mind. So speaking of figures, something that really helped when I was writing my thesis is for every kind of document or presentation or manuscript that I wrote up, I have individual files for each one, which I guess I'll talk about in the next point whenever I get to it. But I kept every version of my figures. So like if there's a drastic change between, you know, this figure that I'm working on on Monday and then I changed it drastically on Friday, like I will save it as a whole different, like a save as, and then like this is figure like underscore two or figure underscore three or version three or whatever. This really is nice to have. It's not like essential, but it's nice to have the different iterations of figures and even different iterations of like documents 
announcements or presentations because maybe you wanted it a specific way and you had to change it a lot for your conference presentation. But then when it comes to writing your manuscript, you actually needed a, like the more simple version or the less modified version that was like, you know, version two rather than version seven or 72. <laughs> So basically, like just when you are working on something, I recommend to save the different versions of it before drastically changing it so that you can go back and use it for different applications later down the road, if that makes any sense. Yeah, now that we're on to like the whole saving and filing thing, be organized. Like, I, I don't know how to. Okay, like let's break down by what I mean by be organized. I truly believe that if you are in graduate school, you enjoyed academics and science and whatever enough you have to be organized to some level like it might not be like the traditional organized you like things a specific way in your head and you have a specific way of doing things so that's how you got so far I, I truly believe that like you you're good man but when I talk about being organized it means like because the number of files that you will generate the number of data sets that you will work with over a span of four to five years when you get to your final stage and you're writing your thesis and you remember this one piece of data like from like three years ago, four years ago, and you you just can't remember where you put it. Like that's just re really, really tragic, especially if you're not doing the manuscript based thesis, especially if you're writing your thesis from introduction to conclusion five years after you start your PhD. Like that's a lot of stuff to remember. So what I found to be really helpful for me is I name everything in a very like, specific way and I have folders for everything so that I can know where everything is. Ugh, I'm gonna call out Nojude right now. I love her. She's so freaking smart that I think everything is just organized in her head in a very like, I just don't understand how it's very organized, but I could not. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, it works for her, but you need to find your way of organizing your things. For her, she has just one folder called data because we use like the shared drive for the lab, which is probably another thing I will get into. And all of her data is in there. So data from first year, data from fifth year, data from third year, it's all in there. And I don't know what's what. And like, I, I just, when, when I look when, when I looked at it I was like I don't, I don't know how she does it but for me like I had a synthetic component I had an analysis component I had um, you know, writing components and figures and stuff. So like I had a very specific way of filing my stuff. So I'll give an example. I have one folder. So I I don't know if I can pull up my old laptop. My laptop died right as I was writing my thesis. So I don't know if I can retrieve my folders in there, which is another point that I will make next. But anyways, I was working off of the shared drive. So so there's anyways. Okay, long just let the focus add. Okay, I have a folder on my laptop called analysis. And this is broken down. So once you click analysis, it's broken down into HNMR, UPLC, nano drop, nano sizer. So basically I just broke it down based off of the instrument. And then in each folder, for example, if I go to the HNMR folder, I'll double click it and then I will see the date. So I have it by year, month, day, and then the name of my compound, which is, you know, I use my initials and then like whatever number. And maybe some kind of like descriptor to explain what that compound is. That really helped me when I was doing my analysis. So I knew exactly where everything was. And I don't know, just having these folders and the raw data like there and like at really easily accessible and organized, like that really helped me when I was writing my thesis as well. Have a filing system and stick to it. Come up with a filing system and you have a system. So I mentioned that my laptop died on me and I didn't freak out that much because I was working directly on the share drive. I know that a lot of other people would have really, really freaked out if their laptop died. This is what it is about backing things up. Just back things up. And because my laptop had like a really like low memory in the first place, I had a VPN on my computer and then I just had access to the share drive of our lab and I had my folder in the share drive and I just worked directly from there. You should be connected to some kind of drive so that you're like constantly syncing your stuff especially when you're writing your thesis because it's very very not uncommon at all for 
like hardware to just 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 crash when you need it the most so yes please save your stuff somewhere else other than the computer or the laptop that you're currently working on if your school has a server that you can connect to and then you can like just load your stuff on there that really worked really well for me but i know other students they use google drive and stuff just to like back up their stuff yeah please back up your stuff that's just that's just that just hurts my heart to think of people that just lose their thesis because of their laptop failing yeah that's too much that's too much i think the last two points i want to make with regards to actually writing a thesis i really highly recommend before you even start writing to go see if there's a freaking downloadable template for your thesis before you write i did not know that this is a thing my friend told me that there's a downloadable template that i could have downloaded off of ubc's website that had all of the nice table of contents linked up so then every time you put in a bigger and you link it properly it will just update the table of contents i didn't have to do it manually and i say you know i wasted so much time you know how a table of contents looks right like you list out the thing and then dot 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 page number but like if you go in and you like manually put in dot 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 it doesn't like align the page number properly so it's actually like a very specific way to form it was just too much it was just too much so before you even start writing go look for a downloadable template because i will save your time a lot a lot a lot and i wasted about a week doing that and another thing is i don't know if i'm just a goof and just didn't know about this but i don't know if i can explain it in this video so let me know if you need this video but i think you can google it and figure it out yourself but when you're inserting a figure you can right click it and then like insert the caption you can adjust the numbering system and everything when you have a figure you usually discuss the figure in like a paragraph before that figure so for example if i have figure one here my paragraph above will be about figure one usually and it'll be like okay figure one says that x is da, 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 da. if i link the caption of this figure i can actually go into the body of the paragraph and i can link it to this figure so every time the figure changes or the number of the figure changes for example instead of if i want to put a figure before that figure instead of being figure one it'll automatically change to figure two then that mention in that paragraph will also change directly to figure two like I was doing everything manually for my whole PhD. So all my papers, my review desk, review article, I was going in manually putting in this figure one, two, three. And then if I change the order and I have to go in and change it around and I have to go into the body of the text and then change that too. So I didn't know this. Norja taught me this and it saved me time as well because when I was using the downloadable template of the thesis, you had to have captions linked to your figures and your tables so that it can automatically update the table of contents. So let me know in the comments if this is just common knowledge that you're supposed to learn in elementary school or in, in your Microsoft Office school. I don't know. Apparently, Noju had a course about this and it taught her, but I did not. I, I, I did not attend that course, did not know about this. So yeah, please let me know I'm not the only one. I think that is everything that I have about thesis writing specifically thesis writing so let me know if you have any tidbits of advice that you would like to share with the little community here on youtube about how to save your ass when you're writing your thesis these are the points that i learned when i was writing my thesis that is everything thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye